and of course to enhance streetscapes. So here's where we get into the standards and uh, we've already talked about one of these as potentially being of concern. Uh, we haven't had any trouble in obtaining these percentages for landscaping anywhere except in the downtown zone. And it's really only come up once or twice and the most recent was with the library. They needed 7.5% 7 5, 7 of their property to be landscaped. Uh, the first rendition only had five point something when it was presented. Got quite a ways through the process uh, before they finally sat down and realized they needed to meet the code and they worked real hard and they were able to find 7.5% landscaping by putting a strip of landscaping along the alley on the back side of the library and removing a little bit of concrete that was in the front along Holly Street and they were able to come up with the 7.5%. It was very attractive but they had trouble doing that and it was related to what Cherry Smith said is this requirement uh, to build to the sidewalk so if you build to the sidewalk, there's nowhere to put landscaping. And one of the examples that we've had recently would be on the other side of the highway when the new O'Reilly uh, auto parts <coughs> store, they needed to meet this landscaping 7.5%. So staff suggested that they put a little bit of landscaping right in the front along the highway and that that, that would be very attractive. And I still like it we had the alternative of widening the sidewalk to 10 foot wide which isn't absolutely required but is a desire in our standards along the highway to have 10 foot wide sidewalks uh, but the other sidewalks up and down that area are only eight feet wide and so we took that and added some landscaping instead for that particular development do anywhere in here do we address uh, permeable asphalt is it's kind of a sort of related issue in regard to stormwater and yeah when we amended the code we allow a certain percentage of your landscaping if it's permeable to be rock or pavers or that kind of thing and so there is that opportunity not to use plant materials but to use pervious materials and call about up to five percent of your landscaped area can actually be rocks that are permeable or pavers that kind of thing or permeable asphalt the permeable af asphalt wouldn't be we talked about that uh, because that's usually for vehicular uh, driving and we we uh, are very much encouraging its use now but not as a substitute for landscaping mm -hmm. That would be going probably a little bit far to call, even if it's permeable, to call that landscaping. <laughs> True. Brian, in 1649080, J and K, I have some changes that I would suggest that if there's ever going to be a list of things that you put on something. One is whether we have any trees to be planted anywhere to be only from the city's list of approved tree species. That would mean to me be something that should be discussed again. And on K, it was the old wonderful Sunset Western Garden Book reference <laughs> that should be removed. I agree with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like a, what, 40 a, years ago? A well-known, <laughs> established. I think we were going to add in more similar Please see Mr. Savory for his sunset garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think for the, the downtown, Brian, I mean, just throw my two cents in there is that I, mean, I keep thinking, you know, what if you, if we came through and we, we, we took out the, the cat building or you took out any of these businesses along Main Street here, would we really require them to now go and put in another 7.5% of? landscaping on top of what the city has already done on the main street and then you get on the other side you know the downtown is yes it should look nice and i think we need to find where that happy medium is where a, 
what you like what you guys did with O'Reilly and, and the suggestions mm-hmm. there, where it makes it look good, but it's not. We're not trying to have them build a rainforest of some sort out there in front of their their business that makes it so it's a little bit too much too difficult to actually put a put a building in it, a facade in there. Yeah, the, to answer your question, yes, the way the code is written today, yes, we would require them to put 7.5 percent on any redeveloped lot in the downtown C1 yeah. core commercial area. And that's uh, not quite as bad as you might think in the fact that in most of that downtown area we also waive on-site parking. So if you had to do both, it would really be onerous. Uh, I mean, thinking like Ladybug but Chocolates, right, or any of those buildings along this main street yeah. <laughs> yeah so if you think about that if they're rebuilt we yeah. want them to be a solid connected wall mm-hmm. so there's no space between them and that we want them up to the sidewalk therefore if you're going to do 7.5 percent landscaping where is it going to be it's going to have to be in the back on the next roof to the <laughs> yeah exactly do green roofs and, <laughs> and the low impact thing ordinances in the code says we strongly encourage you, you if you have a flat roof to put a garden on top of it and there would be a source of your landscaping because we do account roof landscaping so that's a way for us to encourage them to put in rooftop gardens as a stormwater low impact drainage requirement but that's uh, really the, one of the primary reasons I believe the council was uh, looking at the landscape reviews and it's one reason I wanted to get it before you because we're going to probably get some direction coming back from the council. So I wanted you to have your own opportunity to look and think about and discuss and then weigh that with what may come down as some direction from the council. But the uh, 7.5% was one provision that I pointed out to the council that I thought uh, in my dealings in implementing the code over several years that I thought was kind of out of character uh, with the existing buildings that we have. Uh, There's not that much landscaping in the downtown area today. So if you fully redevelop downtown, it would be greener in the future than it is today. And is that necessary? That's why you have the park. And that's why you, that's why you have to decide on that, uh, and it it kind of makes it difficult. Uh, the Alzheimer's is the only other development other than the theater project that we've had downtown in many years. They managed the 7.5 percent partly because it's a residential kind of use, and they needed an outdoor courtyard in the back of their building so they were able to create their 7.5 percent landscaping without too much trouble and the theater it's did it with the parking lot with the little planters right. in the parking lot mm-hmm. right <coughs> but i think some of the other traditional retail businesses would have a little difficulty if they were all to try to redevelop and <coughs> to meet that requirement I so i don't know what's topic, appropriate slightly off topic with the landscape code but i still think that low impact design chart or formula should not have a penalty for grass. I still would advocate against that every day of the week. Yeah, and that came basically from uh, water conservation, air escaping, and trying to lessen maintenance because grass is the highest maintenance type water of landscaping. Yeah. What it is. Conserve water. That's the main reason cities have moved towards away from grass is to conserve water. And I get it. And I all still advocate kind of all day long, every day, that you, we should not have a penalty for having grass. Okay. I would think I- if there was a way to make this like five percent, but waiverable at the discretion of the planning commission based on site and design, I think that's something that would make it so it's a little bit more. Like you're promoting 5%, but the Planning Commission could have the ability to say, you know what, that doesn't make any sense in this instance. Uh, obviously, you could have a variance at any time, but... Brian, if one of these buildings would burn down, and then they have to tear it down to the ground, and they come in to rebuild, then do they have to follow this? Because it'd be a new building? Or can they go back to this far thing that we saw, read about? And you know, they have a year to... Rebuild? Uh, it's p- 
possible. I'm not quite sure that I could make a definitive decision without thinking about that because uh, you know, how would that, you that provision that we were using tonight I think was for these non-conforming kind of situations. Generally speaking, if you're, you know, if they voluntarily tore down a building, they clearly have to meet uh, whatever our interpretation is, a two-story requirement and the floor area ratio and the 7.5% landscaping. If something was by act of God burnt down, then there is this possibility that they could rebuild as it was. Just for instance, the uh, old building down here where it uh, used to be an auto parts building, it's two stories, but you can't use the second story because it's been condemned. It's an old building, it's sitting there. If that would burn down and they wanted to replace that building, then they would have to come up with this 5.5 yeah, If, they, if they voluntarily tear it down, yes. It's it's voluntarily, if it just it burned by itself, that's not a volunteer. Then that's then they could they could build it back, to the it back up, but, right. but it meant it would have built. to be a two story built. Well, they could build it back just like it was, probably if it was an act of fire or nature that destroyed it. Well, they didn't want to build it back like it was, <laughs> right. All right, let's see. We don't allow sidewalks, required sidewalks, to be used as landscaping, so that's kind of similar to your pervious pavement that's for vehicular areas or something. So, but it seems like uh, you guys have kind of zeroed in on the 7.5%. I really don't know what would be appropriate, and that's where we'd need some direction because it's all unique. There isn't any stand. I can't just go look at other people's ordinances. I mean, I could. But what you'll find is City of Portland doesn't require any. And what you'll see is big, huge pots out on the sidewalks that are 12 to 16 feet wide that have landscaping in them. But there's no percentage of required landscaping in downtown Portland. And several other cities, I think, might be the same. But they we're not Portland, or can be. And often I hear that so often that people want something different here and this could be one of those provisions that have caused us to be different we actually want landscaping downtown or maybe not i don't know so who's responsible for the the hanging baskets and the planters that are downtown right now is that the city or is that the chamber of commerce or the city isn't uh i don't think we're spending the money that's a question for renata she's answered that many times and it's changed several times over the past three three See, years doing, it's doing a great job and I don't yeah there's been a few different methods of those and who's doing it and who's maintaining them and I haven't kept it straight so find that out for you if you'd like she does look at 1649070 e makes reference to the old solar access you know, code I think it's not need been that anymore removed. So our code talks about the trees and plant materials. We have two two inch caliper, six foot above the ground for deciduous trees and coniferous trees are supposed to be a minimum of five feet in height. Shrubs are anywhere from one to five gallon size. And ground covers shall be fully rooted, well leafed and used to fill in and cover the mulched areas. And then lawn shall consist of grasses or a mix of seeds with 100% lock coverage so one of the other areas I don't know if that's on here well, maybe I'll get to that later but one of the other areas that I pointed out that's been difficult for staff what you do is go out when a development is completely uh, finished prior to occupancy and, and you do a on-site visit to see if they put in what this the approved plan sets and that includes the landscape plan and inevitably you look at the landscaping and the shrubs that they've planted you have to imagine how much they're going to grow in a three-year time period 
at which point they're supposed to cover 95% of the ground area where they're planted. And in most instances, we're fudging because they will never cover 95% of the ground area. I think something in the range of 70 to 75% would be a more appropriate because there are really nice looking landscaping provisions done by professional architects at that three years later the shrubbery looks great and they're not covering 95% of the bark mulch that's under them. And so I think that provision so that we don't have to fudge all the time. <coughs> Which provision has that 95% requirement, Frank? Uh, I don't know the number because I just... Let me see if <coughs> somewhere in here I actually had it, but I don't know where it is right now. I have to is it it over here? <coughs> I don't see it on. I know it's on here somewhere, but what's that? Yeah, yeah, I put it here. I didn't actually. Well, it's basically stating that requirement right here on the, the slide. I still don't know where that slide is here, though. But that would make sense to at least put that on a discussion. And then the other one, the lawns, uh, I just noticed here that. Um, I think we're going to have to hire some more code enforcement officers because all the lawns are supposed to be weed free. Exactly. In the city of Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I want that job. <laughs> Don't board my house. Yeah. Mm. Good point. So we should probably strike that from there or hire some more code enforcement people. Do we anywhere in the station. ordinance do we address uh, replacement of trees due to age? <laughs> disease say a property owner here on first street doesn't like his trees and one happens to get sick and oh gee that's too bad I have to take that tree out but I don't want to put a tree back in yeah. the code just says a statement in here somewhere that the landscaping shall be continually maintained including necessary watering weeding pruning replacement in a manner nice substantially much. similar to the originally approved plan. Because over time, you just hit on the fact that we don't have the manpower, not just to do the weeding, but to see that when trees die, that they're replaced. Uh, because they do. They die, and they don't replace them. Mm -hmm. But the code is set up so that if we can and are able to, or somebody notifies us that, you know, Four years ago, this was a beautiful commercial parking lot, and now there's not a single tree here anymore. We have the backing with the code to go make it a zoning enforcement issue and get them to replace them. And That's make one thing I have noticed since I, the short time I've been in Canby is that I see a lot of our large old trees coming down, but nothing going back in their place. They're just Either they're ground out or there's a stump there. Yeah. If they're trees in residential areas, then <coughs> no, we don't have anything to say about that. If it's a tree that was part of a commercial development and it was planted, we do. But if it was existing saved material, then that gets really tricky because the fact that they saved it, we wanted to encourage that because a older tree is worth so much more than the brand Certainly. new little twigs that you plant right. uh, but we're not really doing a point system as such and so it could have been above and beyond the minimum that they needed and if you're going to make them and generally speaking we do for street trees uh, we make when one dies or a homeowner decides they don't want it then we require them to replace it somewhere else or on someone else's property or a city park and that kind of thing. Uh, and in certain instances, we can tell them, I'm sorry, but it was a required tree and you can't remove it for street trees. We have that ability for those. Okay. Mm. Well, I think we should probably wait for further direction from council if they really want us to look at something. Sure. 
and of course on That's your the, own just as you've yeah. said here even tonight uh, there's any time you think that you want to propose changes we send those up and see if we can get the council to buy off on your recommended changes as well and any aspect of the code can originate directly with the planning commission you don't have to wait for direction from the council yeah. i went to that meeting that um, uh, director brown is talking about and that's exactly right the mayor and a few of the councilors were sort of wondering how the process works they didn't exactly know how that you know bounce back and forth process works and he's exactly right so if any of you have any suggestions to the code you know um, make them as we're doing these things changes we can debate them it won't be done immediately but what it can be done is put on um, either the radar if it's a big enough change and we decide we want to um, try and make a recommend a code change to city council we can or if it's a minor thing staff can you know sort of accumulate those and once a year go through all the cost and expense of doing a public notice and amending the ordinance, you know, in five or six or seven different ways and making a few changes here and there. Um, so we want to do that over time and then probably annually or so. Is that what you... Yeah, an annual package about is, annually is about... Do a code amendment. About the, I mean, we'd like to do it twice a year. Uh, we're really pressed to even do one right now, but that's, I mean, that's what our goal is, to do one package a year and get as many things included in that package as we can and accumulate them over time. Well, on, okay. uh, the, on that topic, since we were talking about that, in light of what we had to do tonight to sus uh, so make this historic building survive, can we make a little more definitive language in the code, address historical residents, businesses of significance? And so we don't have to skirt this issue I, in the future. I would rather skirt it again myself and do exactly what we did because I'm not sure how I would create a statement that's, you know, you guys press this and you ask us to try. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of time to try to figure out in these unique situations wording that's actually won't get us in more trouble later on. And so I think when you have a unique situation, which I think we almost agreed it pretty much is and isn't going to set a precedent, you don't worry about it. It's not going to happen again for another 25 years. And that's my opinion in trying to write codes, partly because I don't have the skill to do it. But we can look at it if you want us to. That's the exception. Versus the well, I personally would like to see something. If nothing else, just a catch-all that gives us a little latitude to use common sense. One of the, the problems, John, that is, like I mentioned before, halfway jokingly but halfway seriously, um, land use is so regulated by the state of Oregon that you do have to be somewhat careful. And I'm a big, I'd be a big advocate for figuring out a way to accomplish it. Put a big enough generalized exemption in your code to be able to have do common sense things but we have approved comprehensive plans and all those kinds of things that have to be approved by the state and if you get too far into one of those then it opens the, the door for people to just to, to challenge it and cause problems mm -hmm. because you've then sort of gone outside the comprehensive plan and the, the way sure. the state I understand that. that's why I originally addressed the issue of historical residents or historical significance which I don't see how the state could rebut that because I mean you know that's quite a ongoing popular thing now I mean the, the you know I, I guess what the direction that you're saying is some statement that would allow historical buildings to be moved anywhere in town regardless of zoning district or something Within you know, common sense, I mean, you wouldn't take yeah. this house and stick it down here in the middle of Main uh, First Street, you know. Um, you know, you got to have but good discretion. That's is, why I, I like a little. That's that's what's difficult to anticipate where somebody or what zoning district or what specific situation might come up next, 
And so you need to make it broad enough that it's going to cover the unique situation that's going to come up that you can't imagine I'd say that's where it'll be. That's why this body is here, though, is to hopefully interpret. Now, maybe you could have something in there that allows the body to have a little bit more interpretation mm -hmm. with regards to a decision like that. But you don't want something like that just to kind of be like, you can move it wherever you want to because then they could literally move it wherever well, they want Well, exactly. To. And we don't want to go to that extreme. Right. But give us something to work with so that our hands aren't tied and we don't have to hunt and peck and try to do end runs around some of this language to, to make things happen. Any more discussion on that agenda item? Okay, let's move on <coughs> to minutes. November 25th, 2013 Planning Commission meeting. Who chaired that meeting? I did. Okay, Mr. Savory. Uh, do you want to make a motion to approve these minutes? I would. Uh, I would like to uh, make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes for the November 25th, 2013 Planning Commission. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All were in favor. Thank you for chairing that meeting. Sorry, I couldn't be here. We missed you. I missed you, too. It's a lovely test. Item number seven. <laughs> uh, any other items of interest to report from staff? I think there are some interesting items, two of them. Well, we do. And what I'm going to do is bring these to you, oh. Chair. So I think it's most appropriate if maybe you pass okay. these two items here out. Which is which? Actually, there's a letter that goes with the as well right here. Okay. For those in TV land, this is where music starts. <laughs> is it sad violin music? <laughs> <laughs> or joy to the world? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your ass. Well, thank you. Charles, thank you very much for your service. You've been on here a long time and you've done a lot of good work for the city of Canby. We all appreciate what you've done. I've enjoyed uh, doing this and it's quite a privilege to be able to be live here and be on this and contribute something to the Planning Commission. So, but it's time, I think, for me to step down and let younger people come in and take over. You can take a year off and we'll see you. <laughs> 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 Mr. Joyce, same thing to you, sir. Thank you are a younger person, so uh, I yeah, am. Mr. Cook, you said yes, you could take over. I could take <laughs> over, exactly. <laughs> no, it's been an honor Thanks, and a pleasure. Uh, I wish I uh, had the time and the uh, resources to continue more, but uh, I got to take care of a few other things. So it's been a pleasure, though. Well, for anybody out there, we will be looking for more volunteers for the Planning Commission. If you're watching this, you are a key candidate for this type of a role. <laughs> um, and it will probably be posted on the website, I would imagine, in short order. Yeah, that we actually advertise in the paper for openings as well, I'm trying to solicit help. And if you see these gentlemen around town, thank them. It's um, a, you know quite a bit of extra work that an ordinary, regular old loyal citizen wouldn't have to endure to be on the commissions. We thank you for dedicating your you know a half a day or so of every other week to this effort. Thank you very much. Any other? items of interest for not really uh, we did put the next meeting is January 13th and okay so we're not going to hold our last fourth Monday of the December meeting the staff will be gone <laughs> so it's all about so it's all about staff it is mm -hmm. this time yeah. <laughs> it didn't come last two weeks no. <laughs> is there any other items of interest or topics to be brought up by any commissioners Chair, I uh, move that we adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>